Okay, uh, hi guys and welcome to my vlog. Uh, tonight, well guess what, you probably know what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, okay? So, Spider-Man's been around far longer than I and probably you have uh, since Stan Lee and Marvel introduced him in Amazing Fantasy number 15 that was in 1962. Uh, we can't seem to get enough of Spider-Man, really. Uh, he's been in series after series of amazing and spectacular comic versions of Spider-Man. In cartoon versions, in a brief dramatic television series that was back in the day, and cinematic versions, of course, uh, starring Tobey Maguire, then there's Tom Holland, and then there's Andrew Garfield, of course. And he's been, even been to Broadway. Over the years, Spider-Man seems to have uh, acquired two additional superpowers, ubiquity and perpetual youth. Well, just recently, of course, he appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's and Netflix's animated series, What If, you know? Well, he appeared in the What If series here, see? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like sausage Spider-Man. Uh -huh. So here, here's the. He appeared as the zombie hunter Spidey. Yes. See, there it is. By the way, we're going to talk about the What If series, Marvel Legends What If series uh, line of toys in an upcoming video review but for now suffice it to say uh, this was his recent appearance you know, as zombie spider there okay and uh, of course there's the upcoming sequel to the you know the far from home movie that's no way from home by next year i think or december i don't know when it's going to be shown here in the philippines then there was this uh, other animated film, of course, the Academy Award-winning Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I think we have a poster of that here. Yes. Here. Ugh. Cruelness. Yes. This is what they're going to unbox later. Unpack, rather. Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse poster book. Okay. So... Uh, of course, the this Into the Spider-Verse introduced the concept of the multiverse into the big screen, and which and they will accompany us in our journey tonight. By the way, on a side note, uh, did you know that Spider-Man's costume? Uh, you know, like this costume it was voted number one by the wizard staff back in the day. I mean, so this is the that classic version. This is wizard. This is in wizard number seventy three, published in September nineteen ninety seven. Yes, that's pretty old. I've been collecting this. I think I was in right off college. I just graduated from college for a couple, probably five years. Uh, yeah, I just got it from college at that time. Though. So this is the Wizard magazine. So let's find out why Spider-Man's costume is so appealing. It's in here. here. It's in page seventy-three. The title of the article: "Dressed for Success." Yes. Yeah, so the Wizard staff. By the way, Wizard also published Toy Fair back in the day. They're both defunct publications now. Uh, Wizard addresses the 10 best superhero designs of all time. So, number 10 was Jock in the Box. Number 9, Union Jack. Number 8 is Thor. Number 7 is Hawkeye. Number 6 is from DC, The Flash. Uh, 
Number five is from Marvel again, The Punisher. Number four, four is of course Wolverine. Wolverine. Number three is from DC, Batman. Number two is Captain America. And of course the number one slot is Spider-Man. So why did they pick Spider-Man? That was the Spider-Man um pinakamagandang costume to uh the best costume superhero of all time. So it says here that uh the professional opinion. I'll just read the professional opinion of course. The costume was supposed to be a little bit spooky looking, says Spidey co-creator Stan Lee, uh, God rest his soul. The character is based on a spider and spiders are kind of creepy, of course. But Stan Lee points out another tidbit about a completely covered up hero. I think that enables anybody, he says, that it, I think it enables anybody in the world whether the color of your skin, no matter if you're black, white, Asian, whatever, to empathize with Spidey. He's popular with all types of people because when he's got the costume on, he could be anyone underneath it. So that's the whole idea. I mean, as you can see, Captain America's uniform, I mean, Union Jack, that's the... That's British Thor, you know, it's uh, Nordsman, Caucasian, and even Captain America. Captain America, of course, it shows his face and the American flag, basically. So, Spider Man is pretty much anybody. He could be, in fact, any gender male, female, LGBTQ. Old, young, you know, fat, thin, and in fact, uh, yeah, there was even an animal, you know, you know, spider ham. Yeah, we're going to unbox this later on from the Spider Verse, of course. And like I said, anybody can wear or don the suit. Like this is Spider Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Yes, from the Into the Spider-Verse, any color, hence the new Spider-Man, Miles Morales, he's black and he's a kid, you know, that's the whole idea, see, anybody can don the suit, see, there it goes, and of course the original Spider-Man, Peter B. Parker. And in and the uh, Into the Spider Verse, in the Into the Spider Verse film, he became fat. In fact, he pretty much developed beard tummy like mine. So let's discuss. By the way, I've got an old. Ano pala? Again, Spider-Man uh, on the cover of Jojo's Ghost. This is another classic. I think this was in 19 early 90s. I forgot the year. And I have the framed, uh, the framed artwork, of course. It's in the front cover, and I have the framed artwork too. See, now ain't that cool. So we're going to talk about Spider-Man later on as we unbox the stop here, probably open the TV set. So let's move on. It's okay, uh, we're back. So what accounts for Spider-Man's massive appeal? I mean, I don't know that there's any one answer to that question. Certainly, our fascination is uh, 
with the coming of age stories that motivates a good part of that appeal. And Peter Parker's or Miles Morales, uh, their coming of age is certainly a lot like ours while also particularly different. I mean, Peter and Miles are a bit of, are like, okay, so they were a bit kind of geeks like me, and probably some of you, uh, struggling to fit in with their peers and have experienced serious heartaches already in life. In other words, they're the classic underdogs, and uh, who doesn't have a soft spot for underdogs? Like a lot of us, Peter Parker and uh, Miles Morales learned to combat the evils in their lives with abilities they didn't realize they had. Okay, so let's look at the poster. Uh huh. Yes, like it says there, in 1962. Okay. Yes. So we're going to look at it. 20 spectacular posters from Iron Man into the Spider-Verse. Okay, so let's look at that. So, yeah, the reasons for the appeal of the Spider-Man's massive appeal appear to go deeper. You know, why? Because Spidey is uh, self-reflective. He's a seeker. He's a seeker. He's trying to figure out this world and his place in it. He has a strong moral compass. You know, he... He sometimes struggles to follow its lead, yet in the end he triumphs in these ways too. It's like us. It's like me. It's like you. Like us, but with abilities we can only dream of. Uh, Spider-Man, like I said, is a geek or a nerd. But don't get me wrong, I call him that with affection, because I'm a geek too. I myself am quite a geek and nerd. I'm a toy collector slash you know, toy collector, yeah, and a comic bookworm, yes, and a film buff too, by day, and of course, I don't know, a secret philosopher by night, or when I'm drunk, I'm just saying that if, uh, you know, Batman weren't a superhero, he'd probably spend his days on yachts with supermodels. While well, Superman would be working as a pro bono lawyer. And Wonder Woman, well, she'd probably start an animal preserve somewhere in Themyscira or Africa, whatever. Okay, so I'm still hungover from DC's uh, poster book review last time, as you probably know. Uh, so. Hence the DC character references. Anyway, as for Peter Parker, or Miles Morales, but yeah, more on Peter Parker. He'd probably work at a lab in a university, design web pages, or probably teach high school science. We care about Spider Man because he's just like us, but with special powers. Peter Parker has all sorts of problems. Uh, I mean, he's an orphan to begin with. He was raised by his uh, older and old-fashioned aunt and uh, uncle. He grew up poor and stays poor in many of the storylines. Even when he does find love, he doesn't seem to, you know, be any good at it. It's interesting because Okay, so my Digicam, Videocam overheated again. Anyway, let's continue. 
Well, Spider-Man superpowers cause problems for him. That's a fact. Uh, he has to lie to the people he loves to protect them. And that keeps him from getting close. You know, like... Other superheroes have their secrets, but for some reason, Peter or Miles Morales always feel the consequences more than they do. Mm, cool. The question is then, would you like to be Spider-Man? Does Spidey have a good life? Or Peter Parker, Miles Morales? What is a good life anyway? It seems like a simple enough question. Uh, some answers seem too simple. There are all sorts of philosophical questions prompted by thinking of Spider-Man. Like, what is it to live a good life? What do we owe to our family? To our friends? You know, to our neighbors, do our particular talents come with obligations? Like, how do I know what I think I know? Or am I the same person throughout the vast changes of my lifetime? Are there ethical limits to attempts to enhance my abilities? Even if I wasn't bitten by a radioactive spider. Like, what role should friendship play in my life? With whom can I or should I be friends with? How publicly should I live my life? How seriously should I take my life? Is there ultimately any meaning to life? I mean, if philosophy is good for anything, it has to be for the big question, the meaning of life. Uh, well, Peter Parker and Miles Morales can't catch a break. Whatever they do, however hard they try, they struggle in vain to balance their obligation as mass crime fighters with those they must face every day as a normal human being. Like, is Spidey supposed to chase down some costume goon while Peter's Aunt May or Miles' dad, which, by the way, is a cop, lie sick in bed or being gunned down by goons? Then again, Spidey's supposed to sit back and study when there's a crime taking place that only Spidey can prevent. And where, if anywhere, does love fit in to the equation? Does Peter or Miles even have a right to date, let alone commit to anybody? If they do take that step and give in to their Part, doesn't this impose on them duties fundamentally in conflict with the life led by Spider-Man? To make matters worse, Miles or Peter never gets to explain himself fully to the people he inevitably lets down. Sometimes, like, you know, uh, during the Into the Spider-Verse, uh, the other spider persons from other multiverses don't trust Peter to carry out the task in destroying the Kingpin's machine. You know, sometimes Miles has trouble justifying decisions. Oops. Then again,
If anywhere does love fit into the equation, you know, to make matters worse, Peter ne never gets to explain himself full to the people. He never be lets down, you know. Sometimes he has trouble justifying his decisions even to himself, yet Peter persists pursuing this impossible balancing act of a life. Terminally fated to feel inadequate, but why? Well, two notions are central here. Guilt and debt. On one hand, Pierre feels guilt for his Uncle Ben's death, and his constant pursuit of criminals is a way of atoning for that sin. On the other hand, Peter also feels incredibly indebted to her aunt, his Aunt May, and is thereby driven to be a good student, a doting nephew, and a fretful breadwinner. Because Uncle Ben died, or is dead, Peter can never forsake his duties as Spider-Man because Aunt May remains very much alive despite almost six decades of comic books in your life I mean from the 60s early 60s he can never give himself completely to a life of crime fighting well compare this with another parental avenger like say Bruce Wayne you know Batman like I said so got DC hung over from uh, my poster book review the other day uh, Batman is, uh, I mean, Bruce Wayne is not really, who really is the Batman, and for whom the role of Wayne has become merely a convenient facade. Well, this is not the case with Peter or even Miles Morales, who, who both feel genuinely torn. One other possible reading of Spider-Man's origin is that Uncle's, Uncle Ben's, his Uncle Ben's death serves simply as Peter's awakening to what he already knew, that he should direct his gifts toward helping the entire world, not only toward helping himself and his loved ones. We are, after all, told that on apprehending Ben's killers, Peter has finally learned how. In this world, and in the much quoted, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. But how great, though, how great is that responsibility? Or, how about this? Unlimited responsibility. That is responsibility to come to the aid of anyone and everyone who crosses Peter's path or Miles' path. Regardless of who they are and what their attitude to him is or her, it's Gwen Stacy, whether friend, Aunt May, Mary Jane. Or foe, Green Goblin, or J. Jonah Jameson, or indifferent to any number of New York City's, uh, you know, American residents. Peter is unfortunately obliged to rest to the aid of whoever, whoever is calling.